Hello guys. <coughs> Hello and welcome to my tutorial on texturing and unwrapping in 3ds Max. Uh, throughout this tutorial, I'll try my best not to use too many keyboard shortcuts, cuts, <laughs> shortcuts. And if I do, I'll try to explain what I've pressed because we all know how annoying that can be. All right. Um, I use a lot of perspective viewport, I like to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so basically this isn't a tutorial on modeling, this is a tutorial on showing you how to texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you something really basic, just going to make some basic layouts, some basic shapes, put them together to make some abstract shape that I can <coughs> hopefully help you with. So let's say just while I'm talking and making my weird ass shape, just ignore what I'm saying, this is not important, you won't be tested on it. Um let's say that we have your shape, whatever you've decided to make and let's say that you've already made it, it's all ready and you're at the point where you want to make it change from a bog standard shape to something special maybe maybe it's going to be some sort of magical magical work of art, maybe it's for college coursework and you don't want to have to wait for your teachers to tell you what to do so yeah Let's say that this is our our shape that we've got here. It's obviously some sort of uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. First things first, just to make things easier on yourself, if you select your shapes and go on this right hand side to the colours and just chuck it in the standard grey, this helps you to obviously see the parts that have been textured and the parts that haven't. Um, and that's what I choose to do, uh, just so you can get a look at your object as a whole. Uh, first things first, we're going to make sure all of the shapes we want to to texture uh, an editable poly. We can do this down here, convert to editable poly, um, which should give up this selection thing on the right hand side. I'm just going to do that to all of them. And there's the last one. So now we should have three objects all editable. And um so let's start with the square at the bottom. We've got this square. We don't necessarily want to just chuck a texture on there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to the modify list at the side here and scroll right down to the bottom to unwrap UVW. When we click that we'll see that there's green in all of our viewports around the object. Um, and now we need to go down to perimeters on this side here and click edit. This will open up undoubtedly the most annoying part of this software. This window here let me make it a bit smaller. And down here we can see selection modes. If we go to face and drag across to highlight it all, we'll see on the right here that it's highlighted the whole square. Um, what we then need to do is go to mapping and flatten mapping and click OK. And what this has done is it's taken all of these different sides and made them into different different squares. So if we want to edit just this side, we know which side it is. If we want to edit this side, we know which side. And what you want to do is we see this bold box around the edge. We want to fit everything, all of the green parts in the box as it is at the moment. Obviously with this just being a simple square, it's not too hard. Um, what I would suggest is where possible to weld objects together that are actually together in the shape. For example, this side here 
and this side here are both next to each other in the shape. So I'm going to take it, scroll in a bit, and I'm going to put it very close as so. And now I'm going to go to selection mode under vertices and select these. Now in reality we want them to be the same vertices, but they are not. These two vertices here are the bottom two, and these two vertices here are the top two, just to be awkward. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this side and go up to rotate, and just rotate it round until the shapes are the right way around. <laughs> and I've completely lost where I was with this. I believe that's right. So when we check vertices, we want the two vertices to be next to each other where possible. And they're still not because I'm rubbish. Okay, again, I'm just going to turn this around one, like so. It's just a large case of fiddling. Uh, so now we should have these two vertices are on the same corner, we can see in the viewport they're both there so that's good so that's our first side we've got this sort square and this square the same now if you want to click back on move and move them next to each other now you have the option here you can either just place them next to each other or you can zoom in highlight them both and press control w and again on the top control w and this will weld them together so these two sides are now connected to each other. And you can carry on doing this if you want. Um, obviously the next side to do would be this side. Um, and then again you have to make sure that it's it's the right, uh, the right two corners. Which of course to be annoying it isn't. So we're going to have to rotate this again and just basically keep doing this but it doesn't matter too much what you do at this point it doesn't matter if you're more comfortable having it in a different way do it in a different way but I like to weld because it keeps it tidy so we're now beginning to see that we've got one side here the side next to it the side next to that and we're starting to form, we're starting to understand the different parts. So again, going to vertices, checking that that corner and that corner are the same. They are not, so we're going to have to rotate it. It would be very, very much easier if they just kept them all the same way up. I guess it depends on how and what way you're looking at an object. Again, control W. No. So weld them together. Oh. So now we've got these four squares, four sides, sorry, all together and all together on here. What I'm now going to do is use the scale. No, first bottom and top right so I'm going to put top at the top and scale it down and then I'm going to put bottom at the bottom scale that down and then I'm going to take my four sides here scale them down slightly put them in the middle so now we you know, that's set out in a way I can understand. I know that the top bit is at the top, these four sides are around the middle, and the bottom bit is the bottom. So I can now use this. So once you're happy and it's all within this square, what you want to do is you want to go up to File and Save UVs. I'm going to save mine on my desktop so I can delete them afterwards. So I'm going to save this as Square about right square 
so that's now saved and what that will do is that will memorize how this is laid out for when we come to texture it. The next thing you want to do is go to tools render UVW template um, you'll ideally just leave the width and the height uh, leave all of this all you really might want to change is this green here and what this green here is is it's the color of the lines because we're going to be editing it now I'm going to change mine to bright red because I like it to stand out and then I'm going to click render UV template and it gives me this image and although it looks a bit pixely and not correct we'll see that it is. You need to save this image as a TIFF file. So I'm going to call it, keep it consistent and call it square TIFF. So now we've got square TIFF and I'm just going to save that as it is um, and click OK. I can now close that, I can close all of this so we're back to standard 3ds max. Now the reason that we saved the UVW file was if you see at the perimeters here, if at any point we go off somewhere else and for some reason this layout decides to change, we can simply click load and click load square.uwv and when we open that, that will automatically set it back up as it was, as we can see.